Hello everybody, I'm Aeromech on Nerfhaven, Archangel2014 on YouTube, and today I'm going to be posting a unique video on this collaborative channel. We're going to be making a rainbow catch using only hand tools without even using a Dremel. So strap on your safety goggles and let's get going. First thing first, print out the catch template hosted by Daniel Beaver. I'll put a link in the description below. Now on each of the side plates, we have to draw a crosshair right through the center. So line up the small holes and draw a line right through all of it. Next we need the vertical axis. On the catch itself it's relatively easy because we have the screw hole to use as a guide. On the other two you'll have to eyeball it. That looks pretty good. Using some polycarbonate, cut out squares that are an inch and a half on each side. They don't need to be perfect as we'll be cutting them out right now. We now have three square pieces of polycarbonate. Next, cut out the parts of your template. Make sure you cut around the black lines and not on them. The black lines themselves actually represent material when we later go to cut out the templates. We now have our three cut out templates. Next, using some simple glue, glue the templates onto the polycarbonate with the printed side facing inward. Allow them to dry for a few minutes. Using a hobby saw, cut away at some of the excess material. Deburr the material with some sandpaper to check your progress. At this point, your material should be an octagon shape. Take your rasp and on each side of the octagon, simply file it right up to the black line on your template. When you get close to the paper, file away from the paper. That way it doesn't pull it off. If I file this way, the paper will start to peel off and deburr as necessary. With this technique, I like to file down the sides of the square and then the corners. You should now have a shape that resembles an octagon or a stop sign. From here, continue using your rest, and we're just going to round out those flats. Very gently, at the corners of the sides, simply blend together each of the flats, staying true to the template. and check your progress. You should have a nearly circular part right now. Using the file, simply go over the perimeter once or twice to remove any of the burrs or tool marks and we'll test fit it now. Test fit your part into some Schedule 40, one and a quarter inch PVC and it should fit without any problems. Now repeat for the other side plate. This piece seems a little more complicated, but it really isn't. Take a saw and remove some of the excess material on each side, and then just file flats and round them off. To make the hole in the catch plate, we're going to start with a 764th drill bit.
then move up to one quarter. Then finish with one half. So we now have just the hole, but what about this flat at the bottom? Using a very small drill bit, come just outside of the corner of this right angle formed here. We could then file it out and make it a nice flat. Now using a knife, begin to cut away at the outside portion. Remove some material using the end of your rat tail file as well. Test fit this hole to a piece of half inch nylon rod, the material used for the plunger rod. If it doesn't fit, this isn't a problem. Simply take your rat tail file and file out the sides and the top a little bit until it does fit. And sand it clean. That seems to work pretty good. Now continue sawing and sanding the outer perimeter until the desired shape is achieved. Holes now need to be drilled into these two plates. For the outside holes, we're going to use a 764th drill bit, and then for the inside, we're going to step drill using 764th, quarter inch drill bit, and half inch drill bit. Test fit with the half inch nylon rod and use your rat tail file to remove material as necessary. The paper templates can now be peeled off. Use some sandpaper to get rid of any extra burrs. Here are the three completed pieces. Now it's time to assemble our catch. Take one of your catch plates and two 3 quarter inch 632 screws. Secure in a vise and coat the end of your screw with a little bit of lithium grease. Take your Phillips head screwdriver and slowly begin to turn in the screw. Once it's in, you're going to want to go forward half a turn and back out one quarter turn. Forward one half a turn, back out one quarter of a turn. This allows the material to clear itself out and the lithium grease acts almost like a heat sink and also allows it to slide in a little better. This is a way to tap if you don't have a tapping tool. Then just repeat with the second screw. When the screws are fully in place, keep screwing until they extend just under a quarter of an inch. Take a scrap piece of paper and your catch plate with the screws in it and put that paper right there. Next, take the catch itself and put it over that piece of paper. Upon final assembly and tapping, this piece of paper will provide a few thousandths of an inch to allow motion when the catch actually needs to function. Put this assembly into a vise. And be sure to add a little bit of lithium grease outside of each hole. Line everything up and then secure it tightly. Continue the tapping motion of going in one half a turn and backing out a quarter of a turn when your screw reaches the other catch plate. And tighten everything up. 
Next, we need to drill and tap the catch. Place the catch in the vise with the round side facing up. Take a 764 drill bit, and at the very center, drill a hole straight down. Next, take an additional 632 screw, put a little lithium grease on it, and use the same tapping technique to create threads in this piece of polycarbon. So here we have the finished rainbow catch. As you can see, it's holding a K26 spring, which is basically fully compressed. I'll let it off now. There we go. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found the video informative. My channel is Archangel2014. I'm Aeromech on Nerf Haven, and Nerf on.